thank you so much for being here. Today yeah. As well. Thanks really for having me. Have this conversation. Um, before we get to the stage of what you're studying now, uh, fusion physics in Eindhoven, your PhD, uh, I first want to go back to the first moment when you first came into the limelight. Um, Kick Clock, 2009, I think this was, when you won the Junior Eurovision Song Festival, the first and last one. Um, you know, I remember at the time uh, how big that song was. I think many people in the audience will also remember how famous this song was. Uh, probably very hectic. You were only 14 years old. Yeah, that's so right. <laughs> can you kind of take us through, like, going through that experience and then also just going back to high school uh, and now as the famous Ralf Mackenbach? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, well, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head. It was very uh, hectic. <laughs> uh, it, it was, yeah, it was a very busy time because it, it wasn't really a protocol for what happens mm -hmm. after you win. So um, I remember coming back. Um, so, from the plane, uh, we landed in Schiphol, and at the time they said, uh, oh, there's going to be a few people there uh, who want to congratulate you for winning. And the doors opened, and there was like a, a couple thousand people, so it was really overwhelming uh, at the time. Um, uh, of course, it was very, it was great, most of all. It's uh, very flattering to get that kind of uh, attention, but also, in some sense, uh, it's, it's a lot when you're 14. <laughs> Like, you're, you're just hitting puberty, puberty, you don't really even know what you want to do with your life. Uh, so it was a hectic time, uh, I would say. Also in terms of... Um, so you step into the limelight and then a lot of people are like, oh, okay, um, we want to maybe manage you, we want to make songs mm -hmm. uh, for you. And there's a couple of good ones who want to do that. There's a couple of people who might be, have less good intentions and you yeah. kind of need to um, find your way through that uh, maze. Uh, I did not do that by myself <laughs> at 14 year, uh, years old. I have uh, parents who uh, helped me greatly and some other folks uh, to navigate uh, that maze. So um, I hope that gives a bit of a summary yeah, <laughs> of definitely. everything that happened. Yeah. Definitely. And then, you know, you're in this situation, uh, you're still so young, like you said, only 14 years old, um, going back to school. Uh, and then you end up going into physics, yeah. uh, mostly the theoretical side of physics even. Mm -hmm. how, how did that happen? Like, how did you go from being so active with, with music and tap dancing and these other activities, I think you also did theater, things like this, mm -hmm. um, to going into physics? Like, how did that happen? Um, yeah, I guess it, it seems very surprising if you only know me from Click Lock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, I, I always liked science and especially physics. I remember um, being, um, I was probably eight years old or something, and I had a little 4-3 uh, aspect ratio TV in my room, mm -hmm. which I, my parents said, you're not allowed to have it on after 10 p.m. Well, <laughs> you know, eight-year-olds, I have, I have no self-control, so of course <laughs> I did have it on. I was watching National Geographic, and they always had these cool documentaries on space and all, all these kinds of things. And I was always vastly interested in it. Um, so for me, the transition never felt very um, jarring. It was mm -hmm. very gradual and natural for me. But I guess if you only know me as... Um, Hey, that's the guy with the tap shoes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, then, uh, yeah, it must it must seem pretty stark. Um, but yeah, for for me, it, it it felt like a very natural uh, next step, and I, I ended up choosing physics because I wanted to do something which uh, I derived a lot of joy from, and I seemed to get more joy out of doing physics than. Um, well, I got a lot of joy from doing music as well, but more out of physics. Uh, so okay, wow. that's how I, I guess, pivoted in uh, that direction. Uh -huh. But, you know, like indeed for many people of the audience, I think the interesting thing is that they seem like such different areas, such different yeah. activities. But what do you think is it about both music and physics that, that attracts you to it so strongly? Is there like a shared commonality there? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, this, this may seem surprising to some, but I think both uh, require a lot of cre creative thought. Um, for music, I think this is quite obvious. Uh, it yeah. feels more intuitive, like, oh, think of a nice chord progression or some good lyrics. It's not easy. Um, in physics, I think it's very much the same. Like, if you work on some, some kind of unsolved problem, uh, you need to... Like, if you just use your standard toolbox, it's not going to work, because everyone mm -hmm. <laughs> already has tried the standard toolbox. So you have to start thinking outside of the box. How can I solve this problem in a creative way, mm -hmm. where creative means now something else than a nice chord progression. It's a more 
mathematical way, I guess, of, of thinking. Um, but, but that process of thinking outside of the box and uh, trying to um, be creative in solving problems is very similar. And I'd say when making a nice song, I, it almost feels the same as coming up with a nice solution to a problem. Uh, there, yeah, for me, emotionally, at least, very, very much the same kind of experience. Yeah. yeah, that's very interesting. So, you know, if you compare the process of maybe being in your room, conducting a song, you told me that you, you have a piano at home that you still use a lot, right? And, and you know, being in a laboratory, being in, uh, you know, in your office, going through the calculations and so on. Does it really feel that similar, or do you also feel there's... You know, oh, there's difference? differences. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think music is um, it's a bit more physical in some sense, also just directly, well, you, you can dance to music. Mm -hmm. I can't really dance to doing math. <laughs> um, and also just something like playing the piano is also more, it's more of a physical act than just abstract thought. Um, mm -hmm. So in that sense, they're different. Uh, also, more broadly speaking, in, in music or entertainment, I think you're more, uh, more of your work is devoted to socializing, being in contact with other people, and mm. um, becoming a more social and uh, better organized person in that sense. That's not so, that's, it, it's true to some extent in physics and mathematics, but far less so. It's much more about uh, really just, uh, yeah, the abstract nature of your, uh, of your work, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah definitely. And so do you feel, um, you know, combining the two, do you notice that, that you know, your background in music helped you do physics? Uh, and maybe even the physics you do now inspires music that you make? Yeah, yeah, I think it goes both ways. Um, so something that surprised me when uh, going into academia is that having good presenting skills, being able to stand on a stage and... Uh, um, talking about your work mm -hmm. is actually quite beneficial because there's many conferences uh, yeah. scientists go to and there you talk about your work, what you've done, and you try to um, make it digestible, understandable. And that's really more of a problem uh, you typically solve uh, when you're doing like music and performing. So that, that skill was very transferable. Um, uh, and it, that surprised me really. Um, the other way, I think like kind of living in that abstract space for a lot of your day um, helps you to make weird connections, <laughs> which may help you in making music. Um, so I don't know, sometimes you think of some uh, interesting solution to a problem, you're like, oh, this kind of reminds me of how this and this works. Maybe I should try doing something like that on piano. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's overlap. Though I'd say the, uh, from music to academia is more direct than academia to music, at least for okay. me. I'm, I'm sure there's other um, people who may find it the other way around. Uh, it's more intuitive, but yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, and so really, you know, if you compare the, the way of living the life, like, because um, I think that's also what's so strikingly, seemingly similar or different about it. You kind of alluded to it uh, a bit before, but it's kind of, you know, comparing the life of, uh, of a rock star, which you were before, to that of, in no offense, in a good way, a nerd. Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, I feel flattered. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, a little rock star, let's say. <laughs> um, sorry, go on, what was the question? <laughs> How do you compare actually living the life of, of uh, let's say, a rock star before, mm -hmm. a big performer, to that of a nerd, uh, being in the office working on physics problems? So, surprisingly, being a nerd involves more traveling now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, often for, well, something like conferences and collaborating with other people. Um, with traveling, I mean traveling uh, abroad mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, with the life of a local, let's call it a local rock star. There is a lot of traveling, but it's within the Netherlands often, yeah, just yeah, for yeah. performances. So, um, yeah, they're, they're quite different. Uh, and I think mostly the, the biggest difference is still like what, what my day-to-day -day, uh, looks like. So right now, uh, most of my day is just behind a laptop or working on equations. Um, 
which I love. I know that's not everyone's cup of tea. Some people would not be happy, happy doing that sort of work, but I, I, dearly, uh, I dearly love it. Um, whereas previously, I would mostly just be like, okay, uh, we're arrive here, let's quickly talk to the organization, mm -hmm. uh, see what kind of stage setup it is. It's, it's a bit more dynamical in that, uh, in that sense. Um, but yeah, uh, so, so I, I guess just the day-to-day the -day is the most different. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, which do you like more? Basically, because you kind of experience both, and I think especially a lot of people they have this, there's this mystique type, you know, mysterious sense about a certain level of fame or having a famous song or something. You lived it, uh, and now you live a life that's also kind of mysterious to other people, a researcher in the office working on these super abstract things. But what do you like more? I like what I do now more, <laughs> which, uh, well, I mean, luckily, otherwise it'd be like uh, <laughs> a bit depressing. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, my, uh, in, the, in the good old days, that was <laughs> yes. when it was better. Um, no, I, I, I like what I do now more. Um, but it, it's very much just, I think at that point, it just becomes a personal thing. Where, where do you derive joy from? I love working on um, things that I don't understand and kind of getting frustrated about problems and, and just keep banging your head against the wall until you finally fix it. Uh, I find that to be very um, enjoyable. Um, but yeah. Uh, I mean, it could go either way, right? I'm sure there's people here who uh, who, who would not like that. Who would mm -hmm. much rather, um, yeah, uh, be in an environment where they're social uh, most of the time and doing uh, well, not not doing abstract problems. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you know? Would you recommend doing for all researchers to to counterbalance it with art? Oh, um, I I'd say it's always a good thing. That <laughs> it's, it's hard to say for all researchers, but yeah, I think um, doing something like maybe learning an instrument or um, um, art, like uh, um, making, making pictures, uh, something like that can be really helpful. If, if not to maybe think of something else for a bit, then to hone a new skill. Uh, and maybe also to transfer skills over between the two. Um, but yeah, uh, my guess is that it's very person dependent. Uh, I, I know mm -hmm. some people who are like all about the science and they are fantastic scientists. Uh, I know people who uh, have much of a diverse life who can also be fantastic scientists yeah. or fantastic other things. So yeah, I, I, I fear there's not a, a one size fits all uh, solution. Yeah. Yeah. Um, going back to your famous song, <laughs> Click Clack, obviously relates to the tap dancing that you used to do. I think a big part of why, uh, why it was so appealing at the time. Um, but life, you didn't do the tap dancing life, right? Mm. In the end. What's the story behind that? Yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, fun story. During uh, junior uh, Eurovision, um, I wanted to do the tap dance live. It was too difficult to do with the microphones. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't bring any other performing shoes. <laughs> So uh, one of the um, people who um, like supervised um, us young rascals, um, she had like very shiny, bright Nike shoes, black and gold. <laughs> and um, luckily, she had the same shoe size as me. Um, so I ended up wearing her shoes uh, for the performance. So uh, those, those very flashy shoes, not even mine. Yeah. <laughs> But still look nice, though. Yeah, 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 no, everything. absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I think the net interesting question, so you already said um, physics is actually what you love doing most now, um, but you're also doing these type of talks, right, going to this type of uh, events. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is next oh. for you? <laughs> okay, question, great always. question. <laughs> I, yeah, so two years prior to doing a uh, PhD, I always said, um, I'm never going to do a PhD. <laughs> There's a bunch of nerds sitting in the office. That's nothing for me. Uh, I, I was severely mistaken. Um, so I, I guess the lesson that I learned is my predictive capabilities reach about one year into the future, max. <laughs> That's it. So I, I really don't know. I'll probably stay in academia longer because uh, I really like it. Um, but who knows after two years? We'll, we'll see. We'll see. And I think the final uh, big question that's on everybody's mind, uh, you're from Best, yes. from Brabant, I'm also from Den Bosch. When is there going to be a, a Ralph 
Mackenbach Carnavals knaller. <laughs> I think we're all I've, ready for I've it. always wondered. I think you can do like a, uh, a parody of Click Clack with like a, a dwell orchestra. Uh, uh, yeah. That, that could work great. I could maybe get some extra Buma Stemra. Life would be wonderful. It's not uh, a Bollekes collab. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Future is bright. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, we're looking forward to it. Okay. I think uh, that's all the time we have left, sadly. I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed the talk. Uh, and I think one final big applause for Ralph. Thanks for having me.